In this video I'm going to talk about a clock that I have just about finished making. It consists of a slow beating compound pendulum and a grasshopper escapement. You may have noticed its resemblance to Martin Burgess's famous clock B, although mine is on a much smaller scale than his. This is no accident because I designed and made it as a homage to Martin's work. I mentioned in a previous video that he was my clock making mentor when I was a teenager and I wanted to make something to commemorate his horological genius. This is actually the second of two almost identical clocks that I've made. The first I finished in May of this year. I was really stretching my clock making abilities with the first one. As my workshop is very small and basic, um, I should do a video to um, show you my workshop at some point, so look out for this. I cut all the wheels on my small Myford lathe and benchtop mill using mainly homemade cutters and um, a few PP Thornton's cutters. I crossed out all the spokes by hand and, um, and the rest of the intricate aluminium parts for the grasshopper and the remontoir were cut using a scroll saw and bought to size with needle files. I learnt so much and I was humbled many times but eventually the clock burst into life and I really didn't want to part with it so I decided to make this one. The first thing I wanted to try and do was to design a grasshopper escapement and link this up to a Harrison style remontoir. Uh, so I made this 3D model and, um, and I really liked the, the way it, it looked, um, particularly the the escape wheel uh, and its action on the grasshopper escapement. The next step was to link this up to a, an automatic rewind similar to that used on clock B and as you can see here I've produced a 3D printed um, version. It's pretty noisy but it, it works. It's powered by two AA batteries and it has a mercury tilt switch to um, switch it on and off. I particularly like the coaxial nature of the Harrison Remontoir, so I decided to start making this um, before I really designed the rest of the clock. So I started with the escape wheel. I had no idea how I was going to make this, but in the end um, I decided to make my own single point cutters and just cut it in the normal way on the Myford lathe with a dividing head. And this is the Remontoir wheel, which um, also has its own single point cutter. So the next thing to do was to make the grasshopper escapement and um, in the 3D model that I produced I had made use of a twin pivot but looking at clock B I saw that it had a single pivot so I needed to re redesign this to work with my existing escape wheel. And here is the escape wheel and the remontoir wheel um, and the grasshopper mounted and working. No, don't hit the wires. In the next few videos I'm going to take you on a tour of the clock as it currently stands, hopefully explaining all the various elements from top to bottom and I hope this current video that you're watching um, serves as a warning against clock making and having a kitten. They really don't go together. You can see that we have a double-ended compound pendulum which enables a nice slow beating pendulum in a relatively small clock. This video shows the overall layout of the clock before I move on to showing you close-ups of the individual elements and how they actually function between each other. If you've made it this far in the video um, and would like to leave any comments or questions um, this would mean a lot to me and I, I will absolutely get back to you and answer any questions. So starting at the clock, top of the clock you've got the rating nut on the pendulum and moving down you can just see the, the grasshopper operating and its crutch attaching it to the pendulum and then you can see the remontoir spring, the copper coloured spring and the remontoir wheel was just triggered then and the gearing leading down to the hour wheel and in the foreground the roller pinion which operates on the remontoir wheel. So here's a similar video but from a slightly different angle and I'll just let you ponder this without the distraction of my voice. Now 
Moving down the clock, you can see the pinion attached to the great wheel, and attached to the great wheel is the electrical rewind system with the brass weight hanging off the end. This weight applies a cantilevered torque to the great wheel, which powers the whole clock. So these close-up shots were designed to um, show the knife edge suspensions of both the pendulum and the uh, grasshopper escapement. Here you can see the hardened knife edge oper operating on a, um, a sapphire bearing with a V-groove in it. The brass wheel you can see is, a, is an inertial flywheel designed to dissipate the um, excess energy from the remontoir. And here you've got a good view from the back of the clock, which shows the um, electric rewind system and the cantilevered weight that drives the whole thing. So now the clock's disassembled, I can um, point various bits out to you to show you how the, um, the wheel train works. So at the base we've got the electrical rewind system which is connected directly to the great wheel. And that's connected via this roller pinion to the minute wheel, which is connected to this lantern pinion. And there's an out and back gear reduction to another lantern pinion, which drives the remontoir wheel, which winds the spring for the remontoir, which powers the escape wheel. And the escape wheel has its own lantern pinion, which um, triggers the remontoir. And here you've got the remontoir arm, um, which enables the triggering of the remontoir. This element is attached to the escape wheel and it rises as the escape wheel rotates. And this is the detente, which allows the um, the rotating mechanism of the remontoir to rotate by one revolution and here, here you've got a little anti-friction wheel and the whole thing is, is quite well balanced because you don't want the escape wheel to be doing too much work in the lifting. So this is the setup for the remontoir. You've got a, a locking arm, a, um, a roller pinion and an inertial flywheel and a balancing element here. It's quite important to have this thing pretty well balanced. So here we've got the single pivot grasshopper escapement. Uh, we've got the entry pallet, the exit pallet, and the composer here and here. We've got a knife edge bearing at the front and a knife edge, corresponding knife edge at the back, which runs in V grooves in the clock. And here's the, the crutch. And, um, and here you've got the beat adjustment points on either side. So you loosen one screw, tighten the other, and it just tilts the grasshopper relative to the crutch. So this is a slow motion of the, um, of the action of the remontoir arm being lifted and unlocking the detente. And here you can see the remontoir arm just engaging on the next pin, um, on the lantern pinion. And now it's being lifted and will once again unlock the detente and will be lifted clear so that it um, engages on the next pin. When I started making this clock, I really didn't think I'd be making a YouTube video about it. So this video has been pretty vague, um, but I'd like to put this right uh, when I make my next clock. So I'm planning to make videos right from the design stage all the way through to the manufacture. 
and it would mean a lot to me if you were to subscribe to my channel it would just give me a bit of encouragement to actually make these videos please leave comments questions and i hope you enjoyed this video